Hello everybody, and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. There are a number of famous examples of rock cut architecture in the world, and India is one place in particular that is famous for its caves. There are the famous Ellora Caves that date back to 600 to 1000 AD, which includes the breathtaking and seemingly impossible Kailasa Temple. The Ajanta Caves are even older, and there are also the lesser known Kala Caves, not always as well known as the others, but a site that should certainly be on your radar. The Kala Caves are located near Lonavala, Maharashtra, a complex of ancient Buddhist Indian rock-cut caverns dating back from the 2nd century BC to the 5th century AD. Their location is thought to be because of its proximity to a major ancient trading network running eastward from the Arabian Sea into Deccan. They are also situated in a position that marks the division between North and South India. Maharashtra has many larger examples of man-made cave networks, but Cave 8 at Kala, known as the Great or Grand Chatiya, is the largest and most completely preserved Chatiya Hall of the period, with beautiful ornate architecture and featuring many examples of fine sculpture. It truly is a breathtaking piece of work. In this region, the Buddhists of the day were involved in manufacturing and commerce and so they tended to locate their monastic structures in natural rock formations close to major trade routes so they could provide lodgings for travelling traders. These caves had a convenient and also strategic location. The caves were historically associated with the Masasamgika sect of Buddhism, which was popular in the region 2000 to 1500 years ago, with many wealthy people practising the religion. There are 16 caves in total at the site, but the main focus is the incredible Great Chatia Cave, or Cave 8, which is the main subject of this video. It is worth noting when looking at the pictures, that these caves are carved out of hard volcanic basalt rock, a crystalline rock that is far harder than most types of limestone and sandstone. Work on the cave was done between 50 and 70 AD, and then 120 AD, during the reign of the western satraps ruler Nahapana. As stated, the Great Chatiya is the largest rock-cut Chatiya in India, well, even South Asia, measuring 45 metres or 148 feet in length, and 14 metres or 46 feet in height and featuring sculptures of both men and women, as well as animals like lions, tigers, elephants and more. Local merchants, several Yavanas, Buddhist monks and nuns, as well as the ruling elite of the day, provided the funds for its construction, as seen by the dedicatory inscriptions that still survive to this day. One inscription mentions the completion of the cave by a local merchant or banker called Brutapala from Vajayanti, which may be referring to when the final ornate sculptures were added, the final phase in decorating this amazing rock-cut structure. Cave 8, the Great Chatiya Cave of Kala, was the final one to be made in the region, with each cave showing a progression from one to the next, each getting more daring, more ornate and larger. But the Great Chatiya is unusually large for the period, and there are still original parts inside that are made of wood, such as various timbers as well as the umbrella over the stupa. In Chatiya halls the ornate ceiling was often made from timber, purely for aesthetic purposes. At the Great Chatiya Cave, although some restoration has taken place, many of the original timbers still remain. This diagram shows the interior of the structure, and helps us to really see the scale of the incredible stonework that was done. Even outside there was a huge rock cut pillar, known as the Lion Pillar, a huge tower of rock with 16 faces, and with 4 lions on top. These would have once supported a chakra or Buddhist wheel. It is likely there was once a pillar on the opposite side as well but this has likely fallen or been removed to make way for the small Hindu temple that now occupies its position. Aside from the main hall, which really is a breathtaking piece of work, the ornamentation is incredible, with intricately carved verandas, columns, panels and so on. 
15 octagonal pillars line the hall on each side, all of them with richly ornamented capitals, with elephants, tigers, horses, human figures and more, as well as inscriptions. The inscriptions generally refer to the donors, those people who paid money to allow the project to take place. The stupa at the end of the hall is a plain dome, a two-storied circular drum. It does contain holes where wooden parts would have once been affixed, some kind of ornamentation or sculptures. It is surmounted by a capital, and, as stated, the remains of a wooden umbrella still remain to this day. In the Carla Cave complex, there are many other carved chatiyas as well as viaras, which are the dwelling places for the cave's monks. These caves have arched entrances and vaulted interiors, and, just like the Great Chatia, the names of donors are inscribed on the pillars in Brahmi script. The Great Chatia has had a lasting legacy. It's not just appreciated today by Buddhist and Indian nationals, but tourists flock from around the world. Even in historic times, the Great Chatia was a flagship for this type of construction, with several other caves that were built later in imitation of this magnificent and important site of worship. The Great Chatia at Canary, situated north of Mumbai, was built a few decades later in imitation of Cave 8 at Kala. It is believed that the plan was a literal copy of the original, but the outcome does show deviation from the Kala style. There is something so wondrous about the cave temples of India. From an engineering perspective, we can't forget that these enormous halls, with their perfect ornamentation, were carved out of the volcanic basalt bedrock, an incredibly difficult feat to achieve. Then we have the actual design, which really gives us so much information on the Buddhist tradition and associated cultures of the time. There are also numerous inscriptions that really tell the story, which tell us the names of the people responsible for the structures. We are lucky to have the history of these structures well preserved in stone. I wasn't even planning on diving into Indian history, but the more you start researching, the more incredible things you discover, and the Great Chatia of the Kala Caves really is the tip of the iceberg. I've got so much more to come in the coming weeks, so please subscribe to Ancient Architects for future updates. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.